Hi, so Merck has just announced a brand new drug to deal with COVID. It's called Molnupiravir. It could be an absolute game changer. I'm going to explore that more. I'm going to talk about how good the results were, how it actually works, the hard science of this new drug, and also if it will be a game changer for our society. And at the end, I'm going to tell you which stock is the best to look out for for this. It's not necessarily Merck. Anyway, let's get into it. So, with the clinical trials they actually concluded and announced, Merck said that they actually tested with 775 people across the world for a dozen countries, and they found that with the group, about half the group that was tested on versus the half of the group that weren't tested on with this drug, the ones that took the drug only had a 7% hospitalization rate. The ones that took the placebo had 14% hospitalization. What this means is a 50% reduction in hospitalization. Now the second thing is, is that there were no deaths with the group that took this drug, but there were eight deaths with the group that didn't take the drug and took the placebo. And the news won't really cover this, but the significance of this is that it's a reduction of deaths by 100%. So from eight deaths to zero deaths, that's quite major. So from the outset, we can see that this is a significant development and this is quite a big release. So I'm actually gonna dig into the hard science of how this actually works. So this drug is an antiviral. And I'm going to use an example of, I suppose, the OG of antivirals. And this is a drug I can't mention on this platform. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of a screenshot so I can reference to it. But this is a great example because this drug was not only an antiviral, but it was originally discovered as an antifungal, antiparasite, antibacterial, as well as an anti-wormer, and you might know what drug I'm talking about. So this drug itself, I'm gonna highlight on screen right now so you can see what it is. But this study is found on the NIH website, so it's pretty, it's very legit, and it sort of explains how it works. So this is how, I suppose, traditionally you might expect antivirals to work. Now, with this drug, we find that, we're going to look, refer to this study, exploring the binding efficacy of the drug against key proteins of SARS-CoV-2 pathogenesis. And I will just show you also how it looks like in terms of how it works. So this is one example of a antiviral. Now, in this situation, we can see that there's the spike protein of COVID itself, and it could be any virus, uh, any coronavirus, and it just has different of the compounds of this, this drug that I'm talking about, and it sticks itself into where you see, it sticks itself into the spike proteins, and then it blocks the ability of the spike protein to grab onto our cells because there's already something stuck there. And we see this with other parts of, of humans also, so we can see at the bottom here, it sticks itself into other areas of the human cells, right? And if you see that blue little part there, it sticks itself in parts where it's supposed to connect, where the virus or the connectors of the virus, it stuck its compounds in there to block it. For where it's supposed to connect to the virus, our, our cells, the outer lining, this, this drug also has its compounds blocking it. So both sides are blocking. So that's how this original antiviral sort of works. And this, was, this came out in the 70s. In fact, it won the Nobel Prize in 2015 for its ability to deal with a lot of not just viruses, but antibacterials and, and also funguses. So this is one way it works, but it affects the human cells as well as the cells of the virus. So I'm gonna go into how this new drug actually works and what's different. So, with humans, we have a coding on our DNA, which is A, G, C, and T. With the virus, it has A, G, C, and U. This is putting it very simply. Now, we already have something called remdesivir, and that's by Gilead. And what that does is every time it's supposed to transcode the A, as it replicates in our body, the virus, it tries to reproduce and create more copies of itself, it messes up the A part, and then it makes more A's than necessary, to put it very simply. For this new drug, it makes more G and C coding than is necessary, and it confuses it. And so what we get 
after it's reproduced itself is that it's got really confused, messed up DNA or RNA versions of its original copy to the point where it can't exist. The whole virus is broken because the genetic material is so messed up by this drug. So this is how the drug will actually work. And it doesn't affect the human DNA. It doesn't affect our bodies. So that's the beautiful thing about this drug. Now you might be wondering, okay, so it's causing the virus to mutate to a certain extent that it can't exist. That's just my tablet dropping because I'm referring to it. Now, could that mean new variants in the virus? Uh, possibly, but in the experiments, what they found was that it doesn't because it messes up the DNA or the RNA so much that the virus just more or less dies because there's so many errors in the genetic code, it's, it just doesn't work anymore. So that's really, you know, high tech, it does sound high tech, but what we see is that this version of messed up virus, it's so bad that it just doesn't resemble a virus anyway. It's nothing like the new strains. So is this actually a game changer? Now, I do believe that this has the workings of a game changer, but it's not quite yet. Let me explain why. Firstly, this is something that is not necessarily their own. Other companies are doing it. Pfizer is making also an antiviral and so is Roche. There's also another smaller company called Atia and I'll go through all these stocks later on. They're also making antivirals. So this is the first wave of many. And so yes, Merck may be first one off the mark and they can make a lot of money, but they not, might not be the only one. The second issue with this is that it's quite expensive. With this, with the drug that I mentioned just before with those diagrams I showed you, that drug costs maybe $5 for a packet. It costs less than Tylenol. It's basically like a paracetamol, like standard painkillers, cheaper than that. It's out of patent. This one is in patent. What the treatment is, you get two pills a day for five days and that costs you $700. Yeah, okay, there you go. So there is the kicker. But if you can see that there are other companies that are going to be in competition with the price pressure, potentially they can reduce the prices of that. So when that happens, the next wave of these antivirals, that will change the game altogether. And it will also change the vaccine companies. And we're gonna look at those stocks too. Uh, the vaccines are not gonna be the only solution anymore, uh, which will lead people to perhaps uh, less pressure to take the vaccines and maybe people that are affected with the employment with vaccine mandates, they don't actually need to take the vaccine and they can take these drugs instead. And this is just the beginning. So in this way, I am optimistic. I think the price situation is the only thing holding it back. If they can drop the price to something that is more reasonable, then this could really, really uh, help society. The other thing is, is that uh, it, with, with the first drug I mentioned, that's so cheap that you can actually just take that and very relatively safe. You can just take that even before you catch the virus. You can take that prophylactically, which means, you know, just, uh, just normally, just preventatively. And so they've been doing that in India and Mexico and they've had terrific results with the countries and it's kind of, it's opened up. We can't use that drug and I can't talk about it because there isn't enough evidence to support it and we're not doing enough scientific experiments to really support the case. So, the, you know, and it's also out of patent, um, but I can't go into it too much. But with the idea that we could use it prophylactically, that actually has tremendous, tremendous significance. If we can use these drugs that's coming up prophylactically before we get the virus, then the vaccines may be completely out of the picture because I do need to say there is one major weakness with the vaccine. The vaccines teach us to fight against the strain of the virus that it was developed with. But viruses are mutating super, super fast, especially RNA viruses, because RNA viruses, they're so unstable. The RNA is so unstable that even when it copies itself, it's not able to copy the exact uh, genetic material. It will actually mess up its own copy. Every single time it copies itself inside your body, it actually accidentally misses the code and causes mutation. Every single cell almost of virus, if you ever catch COVID, 
is a mutated version of the original cell you got. There is no one cell that is the same. So that's how quickly it mutates. And so when you have a vaccine that only deals with one strain of it, by the time the virus enters your body and it started to replicate, it's already different from that original strain you caught. It's already mutating inside one's body. So that is why vaccines don't really, uh, aren't as effective as this solution, which is disruptive to the whole way the virus reproduces in the body. So this will work for not just this strain, but future strains too. So I'm really optimistic about this. And you know what? I will go into the stocks. Now, if you're liking the video, please hit the like button. It really helps support this video and the channel. And then if you do that, YouTube will pick up on it and show it to more people and help keep this going. And also if you haven't subscribed, uh, please hit the subscribe button, which will get you on top of the latest videos I do just like this. All right, let's talk about the stocks and let me get the tablet out again. All right, let's bear with me for a moment and I'm gonna get you the chart. Now, some people don't like me using the tablet and I get that because I'm not looking at you guys. I wish I could, but sometimes I just need to have something on screen for me to refer to. And speaking of on screen to refer to, we're gonna look at what's happening with Merck. So on screen, you will see that Merck has gone up by 8 plus percent, 8.37 percent on the Friday day of closing uh, as of time of this recording. In fact, it's jumped up to even higher. We're looking at maybe something like 12, 13 percent. at It's high point. Now it's sort of declining. So the move has already been done with Merck. And the logical idea of what we want to do is we want to find another stock that can capitalize on the situation, but has not already gone up. In fact, I do think there is some uh, danger that the stock will drop down and close this gap before it goes back up, or at the very least, it will find it needs to find support at around 78, maybe 79. Um, and also, yeah, it's just we are sitting at resistance. 8150 looks like a place where the market has been reluctant to push past. So around this area, it's kind of been a bit. It's kind of been stuck around there in the holding pattern. They don't really want to want to push up beyond that. So that's a resistance point right there. I'm going to jump into another company that jumped up significantly on the Friday uh, of trading. And that is, let me get this going. That is Atia. Atia also has another of uh, uh, antiviral being, uh, being about to be released. And they have jumped up, if you can see on there, around 20% after this announcement. In fact, they fell a bit. They fell from, let's say, nearly 50 bucks to 42. So, I mean, at some point, it would have been closer to 30 or 35%. And now it's declined since then to 20% increase. Now, if you look at just the chart, it has gone up significantly to close to maybe $90, $100 around that area. Could it go up to there? We'll see. I mean, it probably needs to be a miracle drug and it will have to compete with Merck and Pfizer and Roche. So speaking of, well, the speaking of Pfizer and Roche, let's look at that. So we're looking at Pfizer and this is something I am very optimistic about as a stock price. In terms of as a vaccine, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna make a comment on that but they are doing tremendous amount of business with the vaccine. However, you will see that it has been declining since around July. And I think that's got to do with the fact that um, the third booster hasn't really had a re great reception. It hasn't been broadly approved in the US. They've had a little bit of hiccups of that. So having said that, they still make a lot of pharmaceutical products uh, and the, that Pfizer vaccine that they're pushing out is also making a lot of money still, um, even without the third booster on there. So with the third booster, which some places are using the third booster, Singapore is, so is Israel, and so some parts of the US, that's new business, and that's gonna have upward um, pressure, it's gonna push it up. And, but, so let's go back into the charts. We have had a significant dip this is a great dip to buy into, especially because we've had a massive support. This is massive support right there. So I personally like it. They have other pharmaceutical products. 
They, now they're doing this antiviral also, and they have a third booster. This is tremendous tailwinds for it to push up. So I'm really enthusiastic about it as a stock. Uh, as far as as a company and its products, um, I will hold my judgment on that, as well as well, for all of these companies, I'm gonna hold my judgment. I'm looking purely as a speculative or in terms of how much money it makes like business-wise. I really don't wanna go into how these things, like if these are, are good or not as products. Roche is also another company, pharmaceutical, that is developing antivirals. And this is one I'm also as excited as Pfizer about. And we've seen a great uh, dip, a great retreat, a retracement, and we're finding some support in this area. And if I were to put on the volume profile, which is a little bit more sophisticated, but we would see that a lot of people have traded in this area, and that actually means that a lot of orders are probably sitting in that area, a lot of buy orders. And so we've already touched that. And in fact, we're getting some positive response on there. And that's a very strong uh, line candle at the very end. You see this area, the last one. That means there's already quite a lot of enthusiasm with this announcement. The market has realized that Roche has an antiviral and it could make money. And so does, let me get back into Pfizer. Pfizer will probably have a positive response a little bit, but we'll see. Pfizer has already gone up a lot and you know maybe we need to look at something else. And finally, we look, need to look at Moderna. This is the one that only makes the mRNA vaccines and they have dropped 11%. They're sitting from the highs. I'm not a fan of looking at this chart. It, it looks very, very expensive and it's gone up a lot. It's gone to a holding pattern and it's starting to decline. It could go down to there. So we'll see. Maybe this is a good area to buy, but that's a long way down. That's almost 150 bucks down. So that's the worst case scenario, but you need to look into that. Anyway, that's my video for today. I'm really excited about this situation. I'm not keen to do another market doom and gloom video because I've done too many in the last couple of days. So this is one that got me really excited. I take it you're still with me. So that means you like the video. And if you like the video, you can hit the like button. That's what it's for. In the meantime, I thank you. Share, share. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.